Hey friends, welcome back. I'm really excited to have Sjord with me here today. He's over in near uh, Rotterdam and I'm really excited to have him here today to talk to you a bit about his health journey. He had a bit of a gradual decline of symptoms and things that I'll let him tell you more about which eventually evolved into quite severe ME-CFS where he was bed bound for quite some time. And although he's not 100% fully recovered yet, he's come miles from where he was, has made incredible progress and has told me he has no reason to believe he won't get the rest of the way there. So uh, we're going to you know, dive into his journey a bit first here, but stick around to the end because he's going to share with you exactly what has ended up working for him to start getting his health back. And as I understand it, most of it was things that he found for free on the internet, um, some of it from my channel, which is absolutely just incredible. So Stuart, thank you so much for doing this today. I know a lot of people will really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, I'm really happy to be able to tell my story on your channel because I think well, your channel has helped me out, and um, yeah, I think a lot of people end up on channels like yours and get a lot of inspiration from them. So I'm very happy to be able to do my story. Yeah, no, it's it's I it said people definitely appreciate it. We um, these things go a really long way. I'm curious, before we get into that whole, you know, health decline and, and the hell that we all go through with this, I think it would be really nice to hear right now, just quickly, what does it feel like now, after having been so sick, to be healthy again and getting your health back? What's that experience been like for you? Yeah, looking back, I actually think that a lot of the heavy symptoms and all of that stuff, I was actually putting on myself. Looking back, I wish I just had made that mind switch earlier and I would not have been sick. I don't think I was actually sick to begin with. I think my, uh, my brain had, uh, had just um, made a switch where it was in a, in a state of fear, actually. And that state of fear was giving me the symptoms and thus making it impossible to move forward with life. Looking back at it, it's a pity I didn't find this earlier, but then again, I'm happy I did find it eventually. And, and that's all that really matters to me, actually. I ask because quite often we start out quite heavy in these interviews and, it, and it's good to go through all of that. But I also think it's nice to, um, it, it's just, we can't, most of us, once we get through it, have this new sort of excitement or appreciation for life um, oh, after having struggled for so long. So oh, Definitely, because I was ill for quite a while, uh, the larger part of four years. And <clears throat> it's actually the small things that really make you feel like you're alive again, like going to the beach. I hadn't gone to the beach in so long and uh, at points in time never thought or never thought is was maybe not the right word, but actually being at the beach again, I had envisioned it in my mind so many times, but when you're actually doing those things or taking a drive uh, somewhere where I used to drive a lot and hadn't for a long time, it, it, it just gives you a really good feeling again, like, uh, okay, I'm back. Yeah, so even though I may not be back all the way, those kind of things gives you a really good feeling. All right, well, we're going to dive into your story and hear how all of that went. But just before we do that, I'd like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into their network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists that can help you with a wide range of issues. I started using BetterHelp before I ever knew that one day they might possibly sponsor me, and I found it incredibly helpful. Not only was my therapist a really good listener, but she came up with creative strategies that helped me to deal with the challenges that I was facing at that time. So how it works is first you just answer a few questions about your needs and your preferences in therapy, and then that way BetterHelp can match you with the therapist from their network that is best for you. Then you can talk to your therapist however you like, whether that be through chat or phone calls or text, email, video calls, and you can message them anytime you like and you schedule your video calls at a time that is convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't a right fit for any reason, you can change to a new therapist for no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked 
for you. More scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. You can get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp by going to betterhelp.com forward slash Raylan. So that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com forward slash Raylan. And the link is also in my video description. All right, so now why don't you take us back? How, how did this all start for you? Yeah, so, um, well, like almost everyone who experiences CFS, I'm a very type A personality. I like to do a lot of things. I, I like a lot of things, and I like to do a lot of things at the same time. So um, I was working. I was working out. I wanted to do a bodybuilding competition. Uh, you've probably heard it before. Yeah, and I was, I was doing some freelance work on the side. So I'm a web developer. I work in IT. And I did some work on the side with another freelance partner of mine, but he had a bit of a rough patch as well. Two people close to him passed away unexpectedly, very quick, uh, right after each other. So um, he did not have the motivation to carry on with the project. And basically the whole project fell uh, on my shoulders. And... I could not handle that for a very long time. It, it didn't take me too long to totally crash from all that. Yeah, and I crashed pretty hard. I had to stop working eventually. It, it was so bad that I, I couldn't even make my own meals anymore. I really couldn't take care of myself. So I had to move back in with my parents temporarily. Yeah, and, and it was officially called burnout then. or The doctor diagnosed it as a burnout. I was very overstimulated. I could not really look at screens for too long. Uh, I had trouble reading. I, yeah, I couldn't take in any stimulation. Very tense, a lot of adrenaline going through my body. So I was very stressed. Yeah, that was the whole crash, basically. <clears throat> so at this burnout stage, because I know it, it eventually progressed into something much worse, but at this stage, were they telling you kind of just rest it out and you'll get better? Yes, yes. I also went to see a, a psychologist. Um, I went to get mental health, which helped some, but not a lot really. And looking back, this was probably because I was very stressed about the whole thing. Uh, I didn't really know what to make of it. All of a sudden, I I was at home and and I didn't really understand it. And it gave me a lot of stress. So I went looking for answers like uh, a lot of us do. And I went, uh, you know, I started Googling about how to deal with stress, burnout, and all of that stuff. And eventually you end up in Facebook groups and all of, uh, and stuff like that. But that only puts more stress on you, uh, I believe, because people in those Facebook groups are very negative. And also a lot of the stuff you read on the internet about stress, about burnout, and also about CFS is very negative. So I didn't really heal from the stress for a long time. It was still initially burnout at that stage. This took about two years because, yeah, also one of the stressors I had was I had moved in with my parents, as I, I told you before. Uh, but also my parents, they did not understand this. They, they didn't really know how to handle it. And I don't want to throw them under the bus in any way because I do believe that they had the best intentions in mind for me. But uh, my situation was giving my parents a lot of stress and they were projecting that back on to me, <laughs> which was keeping me in fight or flight. And yeah, it was one of the reasons why I did not heal. So I had to talk to my parents about this and later we... We kind of managed this, yeah. But, but that was one of the reasons I think why this took so long. Mm -hmm. um, and there also was a point when this graduate, uh, when this turned into chronic fatigue. Yeah. So I was not fully healed from the burnout symptoms. Yeah, I told you, I told you uh, in the email. It's not very relevant, but I was dating a girl, and uh, after every date, I felt more and more tired, and uh, to the point where. I was, I was basically bed bound at one point. So yeah, this is where the burnout stage uh, really graduated to CFS. And, and it was pretty severe. Like I was in bed. I could only go for small walks. Yeah. I was, I was totally fatigued by even not doing anything. So, uh, 
uh, that is when I graduated to CFS. And yeah, th that was tough for me because I didn't know, I, I didn't know what was, what is going on now. Like I've been in this burnout period for two years and now I'm so fatigued that I can't do anything basically. So it was a big question at that point. <clears throat> and even with the CFS, I started looking at a lot of external things like supplements um, i did chiro uh, chiropractic i went to a chiropractor i did all those uh, because the chiropractor i knew it was a fight or flight thing i just didn't know how to get out of fight or flight at that point and i had read some things that bad posture can keep you in fight or flight so i was i might as well go see a chiropractor i just tried that and i basically tried a thousand other things that were all external and none of it was really helping. So <clears throat> that is fortunately when I, uh, via your channel, found uh, Faith Cantor. I found Faith Cantor's YouTube channel. She talks about CFS a lot. Uh, also other things like depression and anxiety, but her big thing is uh, also chronic fatigue. She has a free uh, chronic fatigue course, which I took. And there... Um, she really made me see that it is not the activity itself. It is the way you view the activity uh, that is causing the issue. Because if you are scared of an activity before it happens, you are already in a state of fight or flight. And that was causing a severe energy drain for me. And of course, we all know the crash that then comes after the, uh, the activity. Yeah, I was having crashes all the time, even where I would go on a small walk, I could have a crash from that because I was already scared of the crash before it would happen. And then if I went on a walk, let's say, and I had a slight bit of fatigue, I was already expecting it to be a crash. So <clears throat> when that, uh, when Faith Enter really uh, made it clear for me that it is not the activity, it is just the way you view the activity that is when things started to change for me for the better <clears throat> this is something i'm hearing from person after person after person that i talk to and i love that everyone's having or that so many people are having the same experience and i hope that uh, the message is starting to get out there and kind of really to reach people because this definitely seems to be a pivotal part of the recovery process for many of us sounds yeah. like it absolutely was for you yeah yeah, and, and I tried so many things. I mean, like the rest of us, I tried so many things. I tried Chinese herbs. I tried I tried so many supplements. I have a, I, I used to have a whole graveyard of supplements. Uh, yeah, it's all thrown out now because, um, and I think that is for a lot of people. We, we, uh, we've been trained, I think, by the medical system to find it in a pill. Or to find it in, um, I don't know. I think even yoga and meditation is is an external thing. And it's good for you, no doubt. But I don't think you're going to get it from meditation and yoga. Uh, that might not be a popular opinion. But <clears throat> it's good for the nervous system. But if your negative thinking is still going in the background, you will not get into that uh, parasympathetic state, I believe. So... I did yoga and meditation for a very long time. I never fully healed. Yeah, so I think we really have to uh, do the internal thing. That is, to me, that is the number one uh, priority you should have if you want to heal. And what did that look like for you doing the internal work? How did you do that? It, um, it meant telling myself that there was actually nothing wrong with me. Um, my hands were working fine. My head, it, it goes both ways. I, had, I don't have any organ failure. My blood work is normal. Um, there is no reason why I should not be able to go on this walk like a normal human being. There was no reason for me not, not to be able to do that. And I had to convince myself that that was the case. Uh, because I think uh, through a series of situations i had become scared of 
of doing those activities. I had become scared of getting a crash. And it is really gaining back that confidence in yourself and trusting that you can do this. Um, that led me to uh, getting back down. Yeah, that's definitely what I'm hearing. It seems to be that combination of first increasing knowledge. So you need to understand what's happening in your body, that you're not actually in danger, that these symptoms, however horrific, aren't actually technically hurting you as painful as the experience of them might be. They're not doing damage to your body. So understanding that component of it, and then from there also decreasing the stress, because getting out of that fight or flight, and as I've recently learned, that because there's that brain rewiring that's happening and our brains are more neuroplastic when they're in a calm state. So even if you're telling yourself all those messages, like if you get yourself really informed, but you don't find ways to, you know, calm yourself and have self-compassion and keep yourself yeah. and your nervous system in a calm state, then it's going to slow things down. Yeah. I think it is, it is a two way part. It is, um, well, first of all, I think the fatigue is a defense mechanism by the brain. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you are perceiving danger. This is this is Dan Buglio's message, basically. He teaches TMS, uh, the mind-body syndrome. I don't know if you've heard about it, but uh, his channel is called Pain Free You. So basically, the fatigue is uh, a defense mechanism by your brain. Uh, you are perceiving this activity to be dangerous, so your brain is saying, well, let's give him some fatigue, so... They'll go to sleep and not do the dangerous activity. Yeah, so that's basically it. That is the that is the, the TMS part, and you can change that by turning off the danger. So letting yourself know that this activity is perfectly safe, and you are perfectly safe here as you are. Um, and then I think there's the other component really is, and this one was big for me as well, was... Uh, resolving <clears throat> the trauma of being ill because I think being ill comes uh, there's so much that comes with that <clears throat> like in a very short period I lost my job I lost my house I lost I had to move in with my parents I lost a lot of my savings on all of this on all these supplements and all these therapies and other stuff and uh, I also lost well didn't lose, but my friendships uh, that I had after four years of being sick, your friendships are not what they were because you have to constantly tell these people, I can't come. Like, I can't come to your birthday. I'm too ill. Um, and people will understand to a certain point, I believe. And it's very, for me, it was very tough to see those relationships uh, kind of uh, fall apart some, not all, but yeah, some of them fell apart. And uh, those things are very tough as well. And if you don't heal that, if you don't, um, or if you have inner conflict about those things, that stress response will also be on still. So um, you have to really accept that this is your situation now. And that when you are, when you get back healthy, you will maybe form new friendships or you can pick up your old friendships uh, and you can make the money you lost again. <clears throat> you will really have to accept this because if you stay angry at yourself or at your friends or at your former colleagues or whoever, uh, I think you will stay in this fight or flight state. So I think it is a two-way part. It is healing the trauma of being ill. That was it. That was it for me. And um, turning down the fear. This was a long journey for you. Were there ever times when you started to feel, lose hope that you were going to get past this and ever recover? And if so, what did you do in those moments? How did you kind of pull yourself out of it? Yeah, <clears throat> I never lost hope, but, but there were some very dark days and that's no understatement, right? <clears throat> When you lose a lot, and especially also when your family doesn't understand at some points, I didn't know what, what the next move was going to be or how things were going to turn out. I had no idea. All I knew was that I wanted to get better. 
I was, I'm, I'm relatively young and I was when I became ill. So I knew, I knew that I had a life ahead of me and I wanted to live it. And yeah, <clears throat> so, and for me, certain stories uh, also really helped me. I like movies like The Revenant and uh, Papillon. I like some of those tales where people have very uh, difficult hardships, but they went through it anyway. Those kind of things help me also along, yes, along my journey. So a lot of the people who are watching right now are going to be facing ME-CFS, long COVID. You know, what, would you have any, what would you say to them? Do you have any advice for them or any advice for yourself if you could you know, go back in time? You have to relax your mind as much as you can. You have to turn down the fear. That is basically the only, um, the only line or sentence you will need. The activities are not, uh, are not dangerous for you. If you are otherwise healthy, you should be able to do it. And we have an initial trauma that we have after we've been in fight or flight for too long. And after that, we stay stuck in this trauma, even though we don't need to. The body does not need two years to heal. The body does not need that long to heal. So I would say turn down uh, the fear towards the activities and anything else. And yeah, you will, you will heal. <laughs> I would like to ask you, you've done all these interviews. And I think it's so very apparent what's going on. Uh, you know, the, the brain retraining and all that stuff. Uh, I was really wondering, I think people in the medical world should hear about the data, basically, you've been gathering. And I yeah. was wondering, I was wondering what you think about that. I think so many things. It's, to me, a bit insane that all of us feel like we're out here solving this ourselves. It's yeah. sort of a community of people who have come together. And we have programs and coaches, but these programs and coaches and whatnot are almost entirely put out by other people just like us who went through it and had to figure it out themselves and it's still not in the conventional medical system. As a layman, I have no idea how to even get that information there. But it's such a tragedy that we have millions of people all over the world that naturally turn to their doctor for help when they get long COVID, they get MECFS and they're given virtually nothing often worse than nothing some sort of you know like oh you're never going to recover just learn to live with it kind of statement so i love your question yeah. i don't know what the answer is i don't know how we get this there for people yeah. watching i'd love to hear your suggestions please put it in the comments because this is a massive thing that we need to fix and i'm not saying that you know what i'm doing is you know science or it's all anecdotal but the anecdotes are adding up massively and it's getting pretty hard to deny what what these stories are telling us so how do we translate that into um you know the bigger system and get that yeah. knowledge out there yeah i think you have actually gathered a lot of a lot of data like over 100 interviews yeah. i heard you say uh, a while yeah. back so and a lot of people are saying the same thing mm -hmm. um i think it should be a goal of people like you and me and and anybody suffering with this to make it that when someone with CFS goes to Google about CFS, does mm -hmm. not see that it is incurable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what some people have told me, like I did a video a while back, just a short video sharing my opinions after all of these interviews of what I think the main components of recovery are. And people have told me that they are taking these videos into their doctor. So maybe that's a start. And, and yeah. it sounds like, um, many doctors are being quite receptive to it because I'm sure it's frustrating for the doctors of what, as well because they haven't been trained to treat these conditions and it's got to be frustrating to have nothing for all of these people. Um, yeah. So that may, might be our, our first option, but we definitely need something you know, obviously bigger than that. Yeah, I, I think it would help a lot of people if, they, if the first thing they see is not, uh, it's incurable because yeah. that's just not true. And it would save a lot of people so much time, including it would have saved me a lot of time if um, if I had stumbled upon your YouTube channel earlier, maybe, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a great thing that you're doing. And I think it should be heard 
even more. So if there's ever a chance to do that and maybe, you know, get this actually to doctors on a, on a larger scale, mm -hmm. then that would be a great thing. <clears throat> Agreed. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Sion, for doing this today. I really appreciate you taking the time and you putting yourself out there on the internet. I know it can be a vulnerable place to be at times, but I know it's very valuable and that many people watching will have so much gratitude for your doing this today. So thank you. Thank you so much. No, thank you very much. The pleasure is all mine. I think you are brilliant. I love how you summed everything up. I think you have great insights into all of this. I think what you've shared is really solid and helpful and useful information. So I just have so much gratitude for it. And for people watching, I'd love to hear your thoughts on you know, his experience. Does this resonate? Have you had something similar? Um, and what's been working for you? And if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to link one up here from Daniel Van Losbroek that I did a while back, which has um, kind of some of the, the similar kind of topics and concepts. Um, so if you enjoyed this, I think you'll also enjoy that one. So yeah, uh, thank you again uh, to all of you watching. Whatever you're facing, please keep at it. You have totally got this. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it and I hope to see you in the next one.